Okay. Uh, yes, we're recording. Hi. Hey. Hey. Okay. Uh, this is Vance Stevens. I'm uh, the English language specialist who is teaching the creating and using blended learning classrooms course for the. Uh, it's an extension of uh, some uh, workshops that I gave in Thailand just recently in the end of January. And I always, in those workshops, I always had with me a beautiful assistant. Who was that beautiful assistant? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my lovely wife, Bobby. She came with me in those workshops and here she is in our house here in uh, Penang, Malaysia. And so I'm, this is a uh, regularly scheduled uh, webinar actually, in which today I'm going to spend about half an hour, I think, um, explaining uh, what we're doing in this online course that I've set up. So let me go ahead and do a screen share here. Yeah, actually the course is very interesting. I think that the fact that it's recorded, there is a lot of people who are um, you know, taking advantage of the fact that they don't have to be here now at a certain time, but, um, you know, listening and watching what you're doing because it's real interesting work. It's possible because uh, um, it's possible because I noticed in the, when Jeff LeBeau came on the other night, we had about 20 reviews. Let me just stop the share. I want to just make sure that my uh, web, it, can you see my webcam? Me? Mm -hmm. I, I see you. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, and actually, uh, my, I, I see your desktop too. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. I've stopped that. Now, now I don't anymore. Now okay. it's my own desktop. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was a little confused because in the side of my screen, I didn't see my video and I thought, well, maybe I'm not broadcasting. It probably doesn't really matter. Or oh, maybe it's because my, sh my share has taken over. Okay. So anyway, uh, Bobby, my beautiful assistant, um, now we're going, I'm going to just explain to you what we're doing in this course. And this is the e-learning extension of those workshops that I mentioned earlier. And um, we're nearing the end of week two, which is tomorrow, because today is the uh, 3rd of March, 2020. And uh, that's uh, important to say because this is Learning Together episode 442. And I always give the date and the time on my episodes. But uh, this is also doubles as a webinar for the uh, blended learning classroom course. And um, it's nice to have an audience when giving these, these webinars. So anyhow, uh, there are three tasks for the course. And the first task in week one was to, for participants basically to have a look at the tools that I went over in my workshops and uh, in, um, in Thailand. And I went over several tools that were useful for setting up blended learning environments. And uh, they were supposed to have a look at those tools and play around with them and uh, submit a, um, what I call a digital poster in, those, in that first week. And uh, several, a few participants did that. And then uh, the second week, I've asked them to ex expand the use of those tools into making a, um, what I call a digital story. So I've, I've put up several examples of digital stories, but actually we haven't had anybody submit one. But on the other hand, the submissions for last week's assignment came in right at the end. So um, it's possible we'll get some in the next few days. But I've made this really easy for people. Here it is in uh, 
if you really cannot figure out how to do a digital story, you know, you know the, I, I gave in week two materials a number of possible um, tools you can use to create digital stories. One of them was Flipgrid. Now, these tools that I suggested work on PC, they work on Android, they work on iOS. Uh, they were all over the place. So um, basically, one of them was, one of the top seven was Flipgrid. And Flipgrid, if you want to make a digital story, you can really do it quickly. If you just go here, I just clicked on the, uh, uh, that, I was over here in Schoology, and I just clicked on the announcement that's up in Schoology right now. When you go to the Schoology course, you see this, this uh, it, it puts you in the materials part of the course. But at the top of the materials part of the course, there's these updates. And the updates, you can see them all right there. But if you, the one that's activated right now is the one that's right here. So um, anyway, in five minutes, you can make a flip grid. And let me just go show you that one. So this is the link to the flip grid. If you want to make a flip grid, I've got some screenshots here. You have to be sure and make sure that you allow the flip grid to uh, take hold of your microphone and your uh, camera, because that's what it does. And then you work with it until you reach to where it asks you to submit your video. You have to give it your name and a title of your video. And then when you submit that, and you have to record it. Don't forget to do that, Bobby. Bobby tried earlier. and. Uh, didn't actually record one, but in any event, uh, once you when you when you've recorded it, you submit your video, and then you uh, you're told, okay, it's fine, and you've got this this link here that gives you the link to your video. You can post that on Twitter. Let's see what Twitter looks like. You use the tag um, blended twenty twenty, and when, every time I come to the hashtag for uh, the search for hashtag blended 2020 it always gives me an ad at the top I really that's really aggravating so just refresh that and the ad will go away oh no still there okay so I believe anyway no what is this uh, it, that's a woodwing status I must have clicked somewhere else so let me just go back to that there we go that's the the search uh, who is this guy? Okay, so I'm looking for the a search on hashtag blended2020, and I'm going to try it now that, and get the latest posts. That's really irritating. That uh, Has he actually got our 2020? Well, anyway, I don't know. Maybe he's posting our on our 2020, but I don't really see that he is. But anyway, uh, basically, this is what you should see. You should see the uh, latest tags on this on uh, on the hashtag twenty blended twenty twenty, and that's uh, what we're looking at right there is a webinar I had just two days ago with Jeff LeBeau, who came uh, online to show us a little bit about his blended learning environments, which is kind of cool because Jeff is um, in the position that a lot of people are in right now, which is to um, be in the position of having to meet classes which are not actually meeting. There's they 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 have to have a a blended learning environment it implies that you have something online, but you also meet face to face, and uh, you somehow integrate the two. There are three things there: so the meeting face to face and having an online component to your materials and then making the two work together in a classroom or online if you prefer. Those, those are the ingredients to a blended learning course. So if I pop back over to Schoology, um, that's the first thing. If you go to uh, make a flip grid, then you can accomplish the week two task. Now, uh, we're, we're, we're right now, we're at this webinar. This is what we're doing right now. We're at this, uh, the webinar at 1400 Today in Zoom. 
There are, I think, about four more because the 3rd of March, there's one on the 5th, there's one on the 7th, there's one on the 9th, and there's one on the 11th. So there are four more. And um, I'm having, uh, the, the next two are actually office hours. That is, there's no planned webinar, but you can come online and, and talk about things with us. So uh, since no one's here to ask me questions about week two, we're going to go look at week three materials. So this is, week three has all been set up here. So if you go to, um, to the, let's, let's pop over to the home portal. Okay, so no, not the home portal. Let's go to eLearning Home. Okay, so eLearning Home, you can reach it, eLearning Home at uh, tinyurl.com uh, slash blended2020. If you click there, or if you go there, you will reach uh, workshops 2020 and you'll you'll get to this place create your own blended learning classrooms you can also also go to workshops 2020.pvworks.com and if you go there you'll get this sidebar and you can click on the first thing how to create it and use a blended learning classroom so either, however you get there whether you use the tiny url or you go to the workshops PB works page or you go from there to the through the sidebar to the course you're going to get here so once you get there let's see you're going to get this sidebar here and you got week one week two and week three week three is what we're entering right now it's about um, creating and using blended learning classrooms online portals for blended blended learning classrooms so um, in Jeff's situation, I just mentioned Jeff LeBeau and his coming on uh, in the webinar a couple of days ago. Um, he's one of these people who's um, teaching children who aren't going to school because of the coronavirus. So in Jeff's situation though, it's not too dire because in Jeff's situation, he's already set up his courses. Uh, he's been doing blended learning for a long time. And he uses something, uh, what I call DIY LMS. And if you go to week three, you'll find this. Um, you can also go to Schoology and you can see this as well in week three. Uh, if we pop down to week three, we can see that you can click on those links right there, which you're going to get. If you click on those links for the materials for week three, you're going to see the table of contents for the, the week three courses. And that's it right there. So week three uh, talks about what a DIY LMS is. A DIY, DIY LMS is a do-it-yourself learning management system. And it has all these components. So if, if you want to create a do-it-yourself learning management system, which is to say what Jeff has done, he's in the situation of having to meet classes that the students aren't coming, you have to have something online. Jeff has already set up um, an online space for his students because he does blended learning. And all of my classes that I've done um, in, uh, in the last decade or so, I've also done blended learning. So basically, a do-it-yourself learning management system has a portal and that's basically a place where you can uh, set up a narrative of your course. And here in my, my portal is this workshops 2020 right here. But then I've also got a Schoology course. The Schoology is also part of the portal. So, but in practice, in my setting up, the blended learning environment, I really prefer to use PP Works. So that's where I'm really setting up because you can embed all these, you can embed 
Jeff's explanation. This is if if you go to uh, to here, you'll see Jeff's. Uh, you'll see a, a digital story that I set up, talking about how um, talking about how Jeff and I discussed our webinar two days ago, and I started out with. Some, because it's a story, I started out with an introduction about the sunset over Penang and how it became nighttime. And at nighttime, Jeff turned up and he started telling us about his uh, his digital learning environment, which he sets up in Blogger. So in Blogger, he makes a different tag or category for each of his courses. All these, he's got all these categories and tags. Each one is a different course. In uh, pbworks.com, I can set up, I also set up a different course. They're all different workspaces. So if I go to my workspaces, let me see, pages and files, here we go, workspaces up here. I've got quite a lot of workspaces. I'm not sure if you can get workspaces. Um, I, I don't know if you can get so many workspaces now, but for free you can get one workspace. And in these different workspaces, you can set up different uh, pages. <clears throat> so for me, for free, because I, I've been grandfathered into this, I get lots of different workspaces and lots of different courses. Now, PB Works, though, is uh, one possibility where you can set up uh, a... Uh, a course and in that course you can also have different pages you just create a page you can make a new page and you can set up different pages for different courses if you like it's kind of what jeff has done in uh in his uh, blogger his blended learning environment so what we set up in our blended learning environments. You can either buy one, like Blackboard, for example, which is extremely expensive, or you can use a free one like Moodle, which are, is very nice. The only catch is you have to, um, you have to host it somewhere. Uh, some people set up their own servers and host, or are you, you the, the ideal situation is if you, if you have an institution that has a that will keep a server inside a building which is protected firewalled off from intrusion that's a really nice place to keep a server but the problem is that quite likely your moodle server is not under your control i'm using schoology because it's a hosted space i don't have to worry about hosting it's very similar to Moodle, but doesn't have all the different uh, possibilities, potentials, uh, the things that you can set up with Moodle. You can't really do with Schoology, but you can do the basic ones. Uh, here again, I might lose it. Uh, Moodle is nice because if, if you're using Moodle, you can get a zip file of your all your Moodle courses, and you can mount them somewhere else if you really want to. But that's kind of moot for a lot of people. But basically, you need a portal for your LMS. And uh, if you want to know more about that, you can come over here to week three, and you can see what a portal looks, a portal looks like. So I'm using, I'm modeling how to set up blended learning environments. I'm modeling using PBWorks, which is a place where I can really articulate what I'm trying to do like I'm doing right here in this in this page and um, I can set up all these other components in various spaces so well you need a notification space and a notification space uh, I'm using uh, Schoology basically Schoology puts out notifications or you could also use a social space of some kind like Facebook for example you can set events in in Facebook, um, you can have, uh, if you use a, a Ed, Edmodo, for example, Jeff is using something called, he calls, it's called Band, and that's a, Korea, a Korean Edmodo-like uh, interface, which 
uh, you know, lets him set up notifications. Slack is another place. Slack is uh, a lot of people are using Slack these days. And then you could use also things like uh, WhatsApp or WeChat in China or La uh, Line in Thailand or Kakao is what um, Jeff is using in Korea. So these are places that would set up a social space for you. So what, what, the Facebook is good. I like Facebook, uh, but your, your users have to be comfortable with using it in your space. And when you're, you're working with students, well, they may or may not be. Although it's a possibility, some people use that. But you basically need a notification space so you can make announcements in your learning management system. And you, you need a discussion space. So me, I'm using Schoology for our discussion space. But you could, and, and I've also tried to get people to use Flipgrid, as I just explained. Um, Flipgrid is a place where you can, where users can use a webcam and audio to talk to one another. And you can also use listservs or Slack, another possibility. You can set up discussions there. That's something that's kind of new, Slack. But um, you can try it out. You need a calendar space. Here in this course, I, I'm using Schoology as a calendar. And also I have in PB Works, I have an upcoming events and recordings archive page. And I have this visualization tool, which... Uh, I just clicked on it, and so that's, I was trying to plan the uh, the webinars, and uh, so I just created this little tool in Google Spreadsheets. So basically, I've got that, and then the synchronous meeting space. You need to have like a Zoom. We're using Zoom right now. I'm talking to people in Zoom. This is the first uh, webinar I put on in this course that no one else besides my beautiful assistant, has attended. She seems to have dropped out right now. And uh, um, so we're using Zoom. Another thing we used to use a lot was Google Hangout. Uh, Google Hangout is working a little bit differently now than it was before. If you go to go live at YouTube now, you're not going to find what you found a couple of weeks ago. Uh, if you're interested in what's going on you can click on this link for an explanation and uh, you can still revert to the classic studio if you really want to use hang Google Hangout right now uh, as they're making this transition I'm not really sure uh, how that's going to work out in YouTube live you need a back channel space when you're setting up an LMS for people a learning management system, a do-it-yourself learning management system. You need uh, some place to talk to people. Uh, I've I'm using uh, um, Yo Teach. Yo Teach is a was set up to replace. Um, let me see. I have to get. I have to, oh, wrong password. Okay, that's not going to work. Okay, so um, let me try that again. Uh, that's if you put in the wrong password. Okay, so if I come here, this is it. Okay, the password for our space is blended. Don't tell anybody, it's a secret. And um, there you can see whatever people have put into our chats. So one person is using this, uh, Noor, Noor, Noor Adin, is um, Noor Adin means uh, light of uh, religion in uh, Arabic. I'm not really sure if Noor Adin is a, I, I think Noor Adin is a man, actually. I've seen his uh, profile picture. But in any event, um, so he's, he's using the back channel to try to set up some interaction with his uh, trainees on using digital storytelling, and I'm working with him there. So Yo Teach is a back channel tool that people, anybody can use to ask questions on just any kind of thing. And um, you can also use Twitter, as I showed you earlier. If you, uh, oh, okay, if you, uh, 
click on there, you get the, um, oh, it's like Argentina has just posted here. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, so Argent, Argentina, she's in Thailand. She's in Northern Thailand. This is fast breaking news. She's just posted this onto our chat. So as I showed you earlier, I had this one up and Adrian T has also posted uh, more information to our uh, blended learning chat. So this is this is a back channel we're using. It it's effective if people use it. Sorry, I have to go back here and backspace because I hit that and it didn't open in a new window. Okay. So going back to the place that I was before, um, you also need in the learning management system to take in student submissions. Now Schoology will do this in the enterprise version using Dropbox. Uh, so it really has no way in the free version for you for students to upload files to Schoology. So you have to in your do-it-yourself learning management system, you have to come up with your own means. <coughs> So you could use Dropbox yourself if you want, or another way is to use Google Docs, or participants' blogs and wikis, like PB Works, for example. <clears throat> if someone uses a PB Works, they can upload uh, files to their PB Works space. Let me see if I can find how you can do that. I'm logged in here. So, uh, if I want to, um, if I if I click edit over here, then I can upload images and files, and it will ask me to find one on my computer and upload it, and I can put it in the space. So any any file that I have here has a, a link, has a URL, and uh, I can me or students in their own blogs or wikis can upload files and we can download them. But the better way is that they upload them to their wiki or blog spaces. Then we can download them from there or we can see them there. That's even better. So what I'm trying to do uh, is uh, in, in my spaces, I try to set up a space where learners can Upload, or they can give, they can upload their materials, and they give links. As I said, there there are three things that um, I want students to do at this point. I'm going to show you all three in a minute. Let me just go to the very last thing, and that is that uh, there should be a means of tracking student progress. That uh, is possible in Schoology, um, and I haven't really invoked it, but. There are also other, way, other ways of tracking students' progress. You can just give certificates. Certificates are just a piece of paper that says this person did this course. Or you can award badges, but badges are a little bit more subtle. They can, um, you, can you can specify criteria that a student or a participant has to uh, have to earn a badge. So they could have a little bit more value than a certificate because they can explain to potential employers or anybody else what the person knows having got the badge. Or you can use software tools. I think uh, Jeff LeBeau in his uh, explanation mentioned quizzes, quizzes, for example. So quizzes is a place, uh, one of the places here, like Edpuzzle, you can, um, you can uh, create exercises using YouTube videos, and the students have to watch the video, and then when they reach a certain point, it asks them a question, what they understood or whatever. And uh, it's up to you, you make the question. So you set it up uh, so that the students have to interact with the video. And you can see the interactions. Uh, Socrative is also, Socrative is a really nice uh, app where the students, um, I think it's, it's for iOS or possibly Android. Uh, basically you can set up um, 
exercises for students that they access. And probably they can do it on a, on a PC. I'm not really sure. But my students had iPads when I was doing this. Um, but you set it up for them and then they do the exercises and it reports back a score. Uh, you can use Google Forms or polls to also get students to respond to things. Quizzes I mentioned just a minute ago and Memorize is another place where if you want to set up exercises there, there's a gamified environment uh, there. So basically, I'm not going to go on too long about this because uh, I don't want to bore people and also you can come to the course and you can learn more about this. I've got an office hour every other day. Today is March 3rd, but in March 5th, March 7th, March 9th, I have uh, office hours in, in the last webinar. I'm not really sure what's going to happen on that day. Depends on who's interacting with us in the course. But getting back to the course, you can. We're we're in we're in, still in week two, and that's why week two is here. Week two gets subdued, like week one did in a couple of days. So we're going to have only week three remaining, but week two is for creating a digital story. And um, you could post your digital story using this example. Uh, I've also, uh, for the next week, the last week, which is a little longer than a week actually, starting today, I suppose, you can, uh, what you're supposed to do is identify something that you would like to get across to your students and then craft a space for your students according to the models, whoops, sorry about that, according to the models that I've just set up. Sorry about that, I just clicked on something that popped in, into the space. Well, that, that empty space you just saw for the folder is a space where I'm going to be putting assignments and discussions. So that will appear here by tomorrow. So uh, what, you're, what you're supposed to do here in week three is you're supposed to um, identify something that you'd like to go across to your students or to anybody and then craft a space that has these elements that I just mentioned. It doesn't have to have all of them. we we'll just work on one of them. So, uh, oh, me, okay, yes, here we go. So, sorry, I lost my mouse. Okay, so here we go. So, it, you could work on a portal. You could work on any of these other spaces. And set up something. The idea is that for people here who are thinking to work in blended classroom environments, they need to put these materials online. So I'm trying to, in week one, I wanted people to put something up to show me what they could do. Um, and then in week two, I asked people to create a digital story using the different tools that we were talking about in the first week of the course. And also in the second week, I showed many different digital tool spaces. Flipgrid was one of those spaces. You just pop over to, sorry, I, I must have a battery. There we go. Okay, my mouse has started to work again. Okay, so uh, I think I have a battery problem. <laughs> so in week two, uh, create a digital story. Here's the missions that you're supposed to do in week two. Um, so basically, you're supposed to, um, um, create a digital story using some of the tools and techniques. And I, I had very little feedback on that, so I decided to distill that into something, into one digital story space, which is something that you could use in a blended learning environment, and that is to work on Flipgrid. So if you go to Flipgrid, this 
URL right there. You can see how you might use this in your own blended learning space to interact with students. That's what I'm trying to do with people in this course. And that's in week two, just record some kind of uh, quick digital story. Just You're limited to five minutes. It stops after five minutes, but I'm expecting something in three or four minutes. So um, if you go there, then you can accomplish the week two task. And that takes you to week three. So in week three, let's see, we can pop over to our sidebar here and see what's in week three. That's what I've been talking about all this time. So I'm looking for uh, your final mission is, oh, is to, okay, so uh, final mission. One thing is to do, to do is if you want to hear more from me, you can go to the final mission and you could watch this slide pres presentation and you can play it and you can hear me pretty much talking about what I, how I envisaged this kind of platform working in 2012. So there's not much difference between the concepts in the platform itself and the tools that we're using nowadays. The tools have changed, but the concepts are pretty much the same. So, and if you look at Blackboard, which is a very successful learning management system, it was designed even before that. So uh, it's been around for 20 years and more. So basically, uh, all this information is going to appear here in the PP Wiki and in the, uh, in the Schoology area here. So if you go to uh, week three right now, you're gonna find that there's nothing there, but I'm going to be filling that space up with assignments and with discussions in the next day. So if you want to know more about this, please come and meet me in two days time, that's on March 5th. Um, if we go up to Schoology, let's get back into Schoology. We'll just hit the materials here. That should take us to the main page. There we are. Okay, so um, you can find that uh, we're, we're here right now, but in two days we'll be at the, uh, we'll be here, March 5th. Let me just make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so all this, there's a lot of bleed from the text on the on this page into uh, into over, over here. So this is March fifth, though. So if you click there, you can see that our next. I'm waiting for it. Uh, you should be able to click there and see that see our next page. If if you can't get our next activity there. I'm not sure why you can't do that. None of these seems to be, seem to be active. Okay, so it, uh, I'm sure they are in your view. But basically, if you come to the, uh, was it the tinyurl.blended2020? If you uh, go to this, if you find a sidebar at workshops2020, you can just go there, workshops2020.pvworks.com. That will take you to this page, and then you can see that there are many upcoming events. So as you can see, I find it easier to work in PB Wiki than I do in Schoology sometimes. But here are your uh, upcoming events, upcoming webinars. We're in this one right now. Uh, I'm going to archive this as soon as this video recording is made, and this is the next one. So I hope to see you there. And if you have any questions, please come there or just uh, go to our Schoology page, answer any of the discussions that you see here, and um, or uh, talk to us on YoTeach. YoTeach is... Uh, over here, your teach is a back channel tool. So if you click there, you can you'll you'll just you'll it'll take you to a place where you have to uh, type in 
uh, blended 2020. And you'll be able to type a message here. Okay, so good night from me. Uh, March 3rd, 2020, starting on uh, Learning Together Episode 442. Uh, I might include a few of these recordings. And um, hope to see you in one of my future endeavors. Okay, popping over to stopping the share. There we go. Yeah, that's very important. Okay, so bye-bye, everybody. I'm going to stop the recording.